Good morning, dear church. I invite all of you to stand as we begin our worship service this morning. And I'll begin reading the Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty heavens. Praise Him for His acts of power. Praise Him for His surpassing greatness. Praise Him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise Him with harp and lyre. Praise Him with tambourine and dancing. Praise Him with the springs and flute. Praise Him with a clash of cymbals. Praise Him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And we are here to worship His name and praise Him with our lives, with our voices. Even if you are not a singer, as Sam there, your heart can sing. And if you think you feel think that you are not tuned enough, God doesn't care about that. Okay? He cares about our hearts.
May be seated. Our congregational prayer this morning comes from Matthew 5, or Matthew 10, 5, 7 through 8. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Will you read verse 8 with me? Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy. Drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. For the next two minutes, we're going to pray silently in our seats. Here's just some key words and ideas to pray. Give us a vision for godly mission. Give us courage to proclaim God's kingdom come. Praise the king for his authority over all broken things. Praise the king for graciously giving us all things. Will you take the next two minutes just to pray silently in your seats? And I'll close us with a word of prayer together. Father, Lord God, we just thank you once again, Lord, to gather and that we're able to gather together as your people, Lord. We ask that you would just give us a vision for godly mission, Lord. Give us hearts that beat after your heartbeat, Lord, that see others made in your image, Lord, that are willing to reach out to those around us, Lord, where we work, where we go to school, where we play our, our day-to-day lives, Lord. May we reach out to those around us with the truth of the gospel. May we see others. Uh, with your heart, with your hands, Lord, uh, to reach out to them, Lord, to love them, to point them to Jesus, Lord. We thank you for Jesus who took on human flesh and came and lived the perfect life that we've all failed to live and died in our place on, our, on the cross, bearing our sins and our shame and our guilt and rose again. Lord, help us to be faithful in proclaiming this message, faithful in loving others through loving deeds, but also with the truth of the gospel on our lips, Lord. Uh, Help us to be bold in proclaiming that the kingdom has come, the kingdom has come near, Lord, that you drew near to us, Lord. We thank you for being the king who reigns over all things that are redeeming and restoring and renewing all things for your glory, Lord, that you have entered into our brokenness, but through your death and resurrection, you are making all things new, Lord. Help us to remember that you are the king of kings and the Lord of lords, and you're reigning over all things, Lord. And you're given us, all authority has been given to you and you've called us to go in that name and in that authority and proclaim your truth of the gospel. Help us, Lord, work in our hearts. Forgive us where we've been cowardly cowardly or shrunk back. Forgive us for being empathetic or uh, unconcerned about the needs of those around us, Lord. Work in our hearts, Lord, that we would love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength and love our neighbor as ourselves and that you would be glorified. We ask all this for your glory and the good of others. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
consider all the works thy hand hath made. I see the stars, I hear the mighty thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art! How great thou art! Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. Now.
great statement. What a great way to warm this cold morning up, right? When on the cross, you know, when I considered that on the cross, God, God's son not sparing, God sent him to die for us. Amazing. And not only that, but he is coming back to, to seek all that continue to live for him. This is like a great promise, a great promise that already has happened in the past and one that we still live for today. This is the eternal message of the Word of God. I'm Pastor Craig. I'd like to welcome you here to the Union Church of Rio de Janeiro, 136 years serving Rio with that message. Oh man, all right. Yeah, that's the, we got to get excited about that. You know, uh, Jesus Christ died for sins, and yet God the Father did not abandon him to the grave, but raised him up with life, and then Jesus poured out the Holy Spirit that sustains our faith and our walk in him today. So glad that you can be with us, and for those of you who are joining us live on um, Facebook, welcome too. And then some of you are watching this Tuesday posted, so uh, welcome to everybody. Uh, we have a couple announcements here. Um, Sunday morning, every Sunday at 9.02 with uh, Sam, we have our doctrinal core courses uh, in our adult Bible f fellowship. I would invite you to come if you'd like to participate in that. I challenge you to do that. Uh, for your personal growth in the Lord. This year we're really challenging each member at the Union Church to consider intentionally uh, your spiritual growth in the Lord. And that is a great um, tool that we have. Um, like I said, uh, live, if you know somebody, they can't be with us here physically, you can uh, let them know about Facebook, uh, Union Church Rio, and you can watch this service live. And then also Tuesdays at 10 a.m. It says 10 p.m. here, but 10 a.m. in the morning, Tuesday, it's already posted, the service. You can share that link with others. And that's on Facebook, Instagram, and um, what else is out there? YouTube, right. And any of those social medias, it's just uh, Union Church Rio. It's Union Church Rio, and it will take you to those places. On Tuesdays, uh, we post our core courses our doctrinal courses, and on Thursday, a devotional. And right now, we're going through the seven deadly sins from roots, from our fruits, and those things that manifest themselves that we can't explain. How did I think that? Why did I do that? You know, we, we trace it back to the heart to see what causes us to do the things we don't want to do in the heat of the moment. But then we look to the cross to see how we can, how we can change, how we can give that up. What do we learn about God through what Christ did on the cross. And then we've been taking a look at, okay, what does God want from me? What does he want me to do right now? What does he want me to ask for right now? And all of a sudden, our whole perspective of life's changed. We see that we are living according to the Spirit and making a difference in uh, the places where we live, or the places where we work, and the places where we study. So I invite you to come and join us for those um, studies. And then um, Saturday, now the 24th, uh, six days away, will be our Burgers in Blues. And today we're going to take a little bit of time. You can see our, our um, convicts, our invitations are here. So at the end of the sermon, we're going to have a little bit of a time of dedication to pray for our five. Pray for those who don't know the Lord, who don't, wouldn't come to church Sunday morning, but maybe they would come on a Saturday night and uh, hear some blues, have some burgers, and that's an opportunity for you to engage with them in conversation. Invite uh, them to know your friends here at Union Church to see how believers interact with one another. So we're really excited about that. That is September 24th, 5 p.m. through 8 p.m. We're going to have the big artisanal, the big hamburger. Uh, we're not inviting whole groups and churches to come because it's, it's, uh, it's, it's really for each of you to invite five. Uh, pray for those five and invite five, not from another church necessarily, but from who, who don't know the Lord. So that's uh, feeding us, teaching us to, to have a, a heart for the lost. 
And then finally today, after church service, besides women's small group who will be meeting, we have Marcia here with us today to help us with that service project, at, um, uh, English teaching. We're really excited about that. In October coming up, we'll be talking more about those projects. We're going to have also our UC basketball. So I hope you brought your sneakers. Uh, looks like the courts will be dried by then and we'll have uh, some fun time on the courts. If you are new to the Union Church, uh, we would ask that you just take this uh, card here and, and register your contact with us. If there's another need that you have, you can also find that on the Connections card and uh, leave your contact with us if you'd like to be connected by the Union Church. We'd be glad to do that. We can send you more information about all these uh, information, uh, the activities that we have going. We have a UC WhatsApp group, and then we can put your you into that group too so you get those um, announcements. Well, uh, without further ado, let's worship the Lord through singing. Please stand with me. We're going to sing a new song to learn as a church, a new song, Power of the Cross. And I, I will first read the lyrics for you to pay attention without the music on the background. The past that held regret over my head is gone. These chains are ashes now that once were rusted on. I was a runaway, now I am finally home. My mind was a ghost town haunted by yesterday until your hand reached down, pulled me out of my grave. Into the freedom found only in Jesus' name. I am forgiven, no longer lost. Now I am living in the power of the cross. The Father gave His Son so I could be set free. And now the scales are gone and my eyes can finally see. I'll tell the world of all Jesus has done for me. I'm forgiven, no longer lost. Now I'm living in the power of the cross. Goodbye to sorrow, welcome my joy. Now I'm living in the power of the cross. And on that cross, His love held true. Through sacrifice, the old man made new. This life I live, I live in faith now, in Jesus' name. That past that held regret over my head is gone. These chains are ashes now, that once were rusted on. Was a runaway, now I am finally home. My mind was a ghost town, haunted by yesterday. Until your hand reached down, pulled me out of my grave. Into the freedom found only in Jesus' name.
I thank you, Jesus, I thank you, thank you for the cross. Praise you, oh God, I praise you, Jesus, I praise you, praise you for the cross. Of the cross I cannot go 
apprehend the agonies of Calvary. You, the perfect Holy One, crushed your Son, who drank the bitter cup reserved for me. Your blood has washed away my sin, Jesus, thank you. The Father's wrath completely satisfied, Jesus, thank you. Once you enter me, now sit it at your table. Once an enemy, now seated at the table. Tables bring really good things. Once a month, we celebrate the Lord's table from people, uh, people with people from all every nation, every continent. Come, those who profess 
Jesus through repentance and belief, repenting from our own way, realizing that our righteousness is enough, but seeing what Christ has done on the cross, turning to Him for life. Amen. And um, I want to know, do you know Him this morning, the Father, as the lover of your soul? Is your heart singing this morning, thank you, Lord? I hope so. Please be seated. I'm going to ask the children to come forward. Children get so excited about simple things, a gift, a love of, of, of a mom and a dad. They show us that, that dependence and that joy. We want to learn with you guys. Are you guys happy this morning? Very good. I'm Merrick's. Let's pray for our kids. Lord, we just thank you for each one and that they can be with Hosanna this morning to learn about you, that you are truly the lover of our soul. You who, Father, who did not spare your own son, son who willingly died for us, raised to life in power. Help us to and help them to, O oh Lord, just to, to, to repent from, from the way that they would go naturally and to follow you, to love Jesus. And through the story they hear, to leave here loving Jesus more than when they came. That we as mommies and daddies would be just so, so, um, so pleased with them. And uh, we, we, again, we pray this for your glory, but for our good. Amen. Amen. Okay, you guys have a wonderful time. Mm. Well, speaking of, of kids, I'm a dad, and my daughter was up here, Alicia. Alicia loves little animals, cute little animals, all right? And in the English language, we have a lot of animal idioms. Now, I know we have different languages represented here, but I know in the English language we have a lot of them. I'm going to share some of them with you. See if you can finish the statement, okay? So the first one is cute as a, cute as a kitten. Have you heard that? All right. Busy as a, good. That's the spirit we want. Just to be brave and, and cheer out. Busy as a bee, mad as a hornet. All right, he's got a real eagle, eagle eye. Oh, this is too easy. They're sitting ducks. All righty. Um, hey, don't be that guy's guinea. All right, his experiment. Uh, oh, oh, wait a minute. Hold your, hold your horses. All right, a little easier now. Um, you don't want to get involved with that. Let sleeping dogs lie. Excellent. Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. Surprise. Hmm. All right. Uh, puppy. P puppy love. All right. Well, you got a real winner. She's the pick of the pick of the litter. All right. Pick of the crop, all right, could be, yeah. Now, uh, very easy, it's like shooting fish in a, fish in a barrel, fish in a tub, okay? That guy is a bull in a china shop, all right? Bull in a china shop. Don't worry, they're all bark and no bite. All bark. No bite. You gotta watch him like a hawk. All right. He set you on a wild goose chase. Slower than a slower than a sloth. I love that. A snail's pace and a wolf in sheep's. Good. Sheep's skin or sheep's clothing. Excellent. Well, today we're going to see Jesus' commands, all right, to be shrewd as snakes and innocent 
as doves. Would you stand as we read our text today from Matthew 10, verses 16 through 25. We're going to put the uh, verses up here, but I would encourage you to open up your Bibles afterwards or follow along in the um, bulletin because uh, this will be the time the verses are up, but then it's up to you to kind of find your way around the Bible, all right? Reading from Matthew 10, verses 16 through 25. I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. Be on your guard. You will be handed over to the local councils and be flogged in the synagogues. On my account, you will be brought before governors and kings as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. But when they arrest you, do not worry about what to say or how to say it. At that time, you will be given what to say. For it will not be you speaking, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and the father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by everyone because of me. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. When you are persecuted in one place, flee to another. Truly I tell you, you will not finish going through the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. The student is not above the teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for students to be like teachers and servants like their masters. If the head of the house has been called Beelzebul, how much more the members of his household. Would you pray with me? Father, we pray that you would speak to us now through your word, bring conviction of what is true and right, and even of sin uh, in our hearts, in our minds, that we might align our lives with you, O Lord, with your word. We pray this, that we might be able to leave here, not only rejoicing here, but going out into the places where we've come from, where we live, where we work, where we study, where we, where we even play, Lord, equipped and ready for the work you have called us to do. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Well, Jesus is inaugurating the kingdom come, and he's been probably more or less two years with his disciples now, okay? They are witnessing the king of the kingdom every day, and they are with him. I have called you to me that I might send you out. They have seen God the Father living out through the Son, okay? Jesus, as we know, is the image of the invisible God. Jesus has healed the sick. He's raised the dead. He has set captives free from demonic control. And he has even forgiven people their sins. A new type of authority that represents the Father of this new kingdom. And in chapter 10 of Matthew's gospel, we see Jesus, who is really the ultimate leader, preparing his disciples with a vision, equipping and sending them to do the work that he's called them to do. Now, in these particular verses, Jesus is laying out realistic expectations, okay? I want you to say that back with me. Jesus is going to lay out for his disciples realistic expectations, okay? As they announce the good news of the kingdom of God to the lost. And it's really important. Here, he's just sending them out to the lost cities of Israel. But they are preaching the good news of the kingdom and the king of that kingdom to the lost, all right? Well, these realistic expectations are really important for you this morning and for me, okay? I, as your pastor, I am commissioning you, Union Church, to go out from the walls of the church 
and to be the church, doing the work of the church, where? Where you live, to your home, to your family, to your neighbors, where you work, to your colleagues, where you play, maybe the beach, maybe the, the basketball court, right? Maybe the tennis court, wherever that is, whatever your hobby is, picking up trash here or there, to live out the mission that God has given us. So we're embracing God's kingdom, the kingdom come, by engaging with people in mission, okay? So the idea is that we go out and we bless others, and we saw that in 1 Peter 2 and 3, 1 Peter chapter 2 and 3, and you go back home and read that. That was last week with Joshua and Naomi. We also saw it in James 3, 13, through the end of the chapter, and James 4, right? You go out and you bless, but then you invite people to come. Come and see. Come and see this reality that, you, that they see you living out alone, but when they come and they see you engaging with others who love Jesus, something powerful happens. So John tells us when the unbelieving who never have seen God see you interacting with other believers, all of a sudden the invisible God becomes visible. And that's the idea of bringing people, not so much for a, a service or program, but in an area where they, they can hear the good news, they see the good news, but they see you living out your life. And that's what I'm commissioning you to do. And so this morning is preparation, continued preparation for that. Well, realistic expectation number one. Here it is. I'm sending you out like Jesus did as sheep among wolves, okay? Let me read once again Matthew 10, 16 for you. This is a different version, but you'll see the, the comparison of, of words here. In sending out the twelve, Jesus said to him, to them, behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. So the NIV, as we saw in the first reading, was shrewd as snakes and innocent as doves. So shrewd means to be wise, okay? It's to have a clear understanding and a good judgment in the situation. It's discernment. And, and many of us here are discerners, right? How many of you consider yourself wise? You just have a little bit better perspective of, mm, this doesn't seem right, you know? And so we're told to be wise, and that's kind of a head thing, right? But we're also to be innocent or harmless as doves. And that's more of a heart thing. And so we often say we speak truth in love. And we know the dangers of speaking truth and discernment without love, right? It's a, it's, it's a, a, a clanging gong, and it brings no edification. But if we're all love and no truth, <laughs> just humanism, really, and we, 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 you might as well not even bring the cross into it. What are we really, what are we doing here? But here, Jesus' word is be shrewd as serpents, bring your mind into it, understanding, also innocent, harmless, compassionate like a dove. Now, Jesus was using a simile. I know a lot of folks here with a second language, you know, you guys know this better than we do, metaphors and similes, but what is a simile? Well, it's a comparison of two unlike things, things that are kind of opposite, right? A snake is not like a dove. And ladies probably like to be called a dove, that's kind of neat. I don't think men like to be called snakes or doves, right? <laughs> but here is what uh, Jesus gives us because he wants us to be wise like a snake, not the other characteristics that we have in the garden, you know, but he wants us to be harmless like doves. And this is preparing them, telling them how to behave when they're out in the world, when they're engaging with people where he's sending them to go amongst the lost. 
Well, just before Jesus tells them to be wise and harmless, he warns them that they are being sent out like sheep amongst wolves. Now, I looked this up. I, if you guys are doing a Bible study, I find the, uh, the Got Questions uh, website. There's so many good helps these days. It's a pretty decent one. I consult a lot of different resources. And I really felt this one of the most helpful thing here. Got questions, uh, not got milk, but got questions. They're a pretty solid group. And they said this, the world then, the world then in Jesus' time when he was sending them out, as now was hostile to believers. They were wolves, all right? Not incidentally hostile, but purposefully hostile to harm the sheep. Now, what do we know about wolves? You guys ever watch the history, I mean, the, the, the animal channel, animal planet? What do we know about wolves? They are purposefully harmful towards the sheep. The world is pur purposefully harmful toward the believing church, just as wolves are intentionally harmful to inflict uh, a pain and harm upon the sheep. Now, in such an environment, knowing that you're going to be living light in darkness in a hostile environment, the question for us this morning, church, as I'm sending you out as well, how can we advance the kingdom of God, the gospel, effectively without actually becoming ourselves predatory? You're surrounded by this hostility. How do we carry out the good news of the gospel without becoming predatory ourselves or wolvish? Well, Jesus taught his followers that to be Christ-like, to become like Christ in a godless world, they must combine the wisdom of a serpent and the harmlessness of the dove. Christ's likeness to become like Jesus is always our goal. That's what we're doing here. We're following Jesus. We're worshiping Jesus with the hopes of being transformed into his image. That is the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We have been justified through the cross. There's no coming to know the Father and salvation without the cross. But that's not where it ends. That's the very beginning. Then you're being transformed. You're being in transformed into Christ's image, you're becoming like him. And as we become like Jesus, we will always bear fruit. It's where the harvest of righteousness comes from. So not only Jesus gives us the command to go and be wise and go and be harmless and innocent, but he becomes our example of it. He was with the disciples. Their school was the school of discipleship. They followed Jesus, and he showed them what that looked like. He was a gentle person, Matthew 12, in verse 20, it says, testifies to the fact that he would not quench a smoking flax. Now, that was, you have a little read. Some of you guys see these uh, wilderness shows, and, and, you know, you're out there with just uh, almost nothing, really, and you got to start a fire, and they finally get this smoke going on a little reed, and they're trying to get that thing going. Jesus was gentle, Matthew says. He would not put out even a smoking reed, okay? And we see that, how he tra treated uh, the outcasts, the lepers, the sick, and even the sinner. The immoral, the tax collector. Yet Jesus was a discerning person. And when the occasion demanded it, he was able to pick up the whip. And with a very coarse word, in a sense, a very cutting word, he was able to chase out the money changers from the, ta from the temple. Because he was discerning. Got Questions commentary continues to say that Jesus, the dove-like man of innocence, spoke loudly and clearly with his assertiveness in the temple. 
Jesus showed that he was wise as a servant in that he taught, in what he taught, the way he taught, he knew how to discern the difference in his audience. Now this is a critical skill that some of you have more automatically and some of you need to develop. It's the skill of discernment, okay? Now Jesus, one way he used that skill was by telling stories, parables. Through his parables, he was able to both feed and weed. Who did the, the good shepherd feed? Sheep, right? Those who truly followed him. But he was also able to weed out that which didn't belong there, right? He was very discerning. He both, he could feed and he could weed. He fed his sheep and he was weep, weeding out the wolves. Matthew 13 says this. Matthew 13, verse 10. The disciples came and asked, Why do you speak to the people in parables? And Jesus replied, Because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Jesus refused to be caught in many traps that the Pharisees, the wolves, his enemies, laid for him. Mark 8 says this, the Pharisees came and began to question Jesus, to test him. They asked him for a sign from heaven. He sighed deeply. Why does this generation ask for a sign? Truly I tell you, no sign will be given to it. And then he left them, got back into the boat and crossed to the other side. There was times Jesus just refused to, to speak to give revelation because he discerned their heart. He was not going to throw pearls of the kingdom before swine or wolves. Well, here's the point for us as well. Be discerning when you go out there and even if it's to come to a dinner, don't throw pearls before swine. Don't waste your words. Now, you have to be discerning here because we're supposed to cast the gospel seed everywhere. But you know if there's a person just mocking God or enticing you to fight, then that's not the time to share your testimony or share the gospel. It might be a time to bring that, that enemy to the table you know, for something like this. You have to pray about that. But I have seen at times, it's time to share because a person's asking questions and you can tell they really want to know. But then another time a person's asking, but the way they're asking, they're accusing. <laughs> and if you open your mouth even a little bit, it just gives them a platform to yell and scream louder, okay? So you need to be discerning. And in that case, it's sufficient to just live out a godly life in their presence. 1 Peter 2.12 Live such good lives among unbelievers that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits you. Now, besides being discerning, Jesus' heart was not hardened, okay? Jesus remained innocent like a dove. It's hard to live in a cynical world without becoming guarded and cynical ourselves. But Jesus models that his heart remained harmless and innocent. Let me read from you Hebrews 4.15 about the innocence of Christ. All that he uh, was uh, confronting, right? All the traps, and yet sinless. Therefore, Hebrews 4.15 says, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses. But we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are. Yet he did not sin. He did not become cynical. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy 
and find grace to help us in our time of need. Don't let your heart grow weary, church. Don't, not, don't let your, your, your love grow cold. Back in youth pastor day, they said you had to be like an aardvark. You know, you had to have this hard shell outside to not take everything personally, but you had to be warm and gooey on the inside. You couldn't let your heart get hardened, right? Not even in the midst of wolves. And Jesus then is not only our example, but he's our high priest. He's our strength. And we go to him with confidence to receive what? Two things. Both grace and mercy. And that's the, that's the, that's the compassionate Christ that we see for the lost. Listen to this. Matthew 9, 36. Jesus went through all the towns and villages. Now, this is just before Matthew 10. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. Now, 10 starts off by Jesus sending out the 12 where? To all the towns and villages. So where Jesus was going, now he's multiplying, sending out the 12. Now, they've seen him do all those miracles. And now, by the authority of God, he is sending them out in that same kingdom of reality. 36. When Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them. Because they were harassed, helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Question for you, church, this morning. When you look out to Rio and you see that the crowded streets, the bagunza, have you let your heart become hard? Have you become guarded? Have you let your heart become cynical? Jesus is our example. And Jesus is our strength. Be shrewd as serpents, but innocent as doves. Well, before we come up here and pray for two things, pray that the Lord would open up the eyes of the hearts of our friends, that they might see Jesus, they may believe, that they might see us and see Jesus in us and believe. We also, and, and also pray that the Lord would send more workers to out to the harvest, right? I just want to share, go through these verses very quickly, just quickly, to see how Jesus prepared his disciples for the battle, for, for the work he called them to do. So the next uh, real realization that he, he that he, he, he realistic expectation he gives them here number two is this in verse 17 and 18 that they would be flogged in the religious places the synagogue and yet they would be witnessed before kings Gentiles right Matthew 10 17 and 18 be on your guard you will be handed over to the local councils and be flogged in the synagogues on my account, you will be brought before the governors and kings as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. And then he tells them this, the third expectation. He said uh, in 19 and 20, you will be given what to say through the Holy Spirit. Now, when they arrest you, do not worry about what to say or how to say it. At that time, you will be given what to say, for it will not be you speaking, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Now, this was a special time because the Holy Spirit had not been poured out yet at Pentecost, and yet they had been walking with Jesus himself to see Jesus exercising that. So Jesus breathed on them. He gave them the power of the Holy Spirit for those moments, right? But you and I are a little bit different. We don't copy this totally. Today, those same men wrote the Scriptures for us. We have the written word of God through them. So you can go out without being worried about what to say, knowing the Spirit will work through you, if, like them spend time with Jesus, you spend time in the Word. Because Jesus says, hear my word, all right? 
live by my word. Then he says, these are my representatives. The apostles, the sent ones, they are sent out. I call them to be with me so I might send them out as my authority, in my authority, speaking my very word, all right? So church, we call you with all those, 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 those announcements in the beginning, the, the teaching Sunday mornings, the teaching Tuesdays, the teaching Thursdays, the teaching in small groups, so that you're prepared with the word of God, so that when you get into that situation, you are equipped. Now we also see, as we rely on the Spirit of God, in verse 21, you will face disorder of the created order. Now this is really important. It says this, brother will betray brother to death and father his child. Children will rebel against his parents and have them put to death. Today, more than ever, it is harder to live the life of a believer because of our world trying to redefine identity, <laughs> redefine what is right and wrong, and particularly from Genesis 1, just canceling out that whole culture of being a biological man and a biological woman. woman. You can identify who you want to be. And Jesus says, you'll see this violence happening, this disorder, people, everyone like sheep doing what's right in their own eyes, and it's not getting more peaceful, people are pointing the fingers, and more and more we're going to see families betraying one another, but then finally it says here in verse 22, you will be hated by everyone because of me. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this is the expectation of salvation and reward. Here it is. He who stands firm to the very end will be saved. That's why we talked about justification. You say the sinner's prayer, okay. But what proves out our salvation is the presence of the Spirit that you Permanecer, you, you remain in Christ. We're baptized by the Spirit, but day to day we prove that out by being filled with the Spirit, which means yielding to my way, not my will, but yours be done. And we have the promise of great reward and salvation if we stand firm in the midst of a world that's quickly taking the correct order of things in turning it into disorder. We see here, very critical for you to know this and believe this, Matthew 10, 23. When you are persecuted one place, flee to another. Truly I tell you, you will not finish going through the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. Now, we don't need to copy all this as strategy. This was their strategy because they were just starting out. We knew the gospel would go to, to Jerusalem and then to uh, Judea, Samaria, to the very ends of the earth once the Holy Spirit was um, poured out. But what is crucial for us to understand here this meaning that before they would even go through all those towns then, the Son of Man would come. Now the Son of Man was still with them, so what does it mean the Son of Man would come? The Son of Man coming usually is a sign of judgment. And most uh, believe here that this was God's judgment through the Romans in A.D. 70. That those uh, preaching, those apostles preaching, some rejecting, well, most rejecting, that led to the judgment of God over Jerusalem and the destruction of Jerusalem. And in the same way, that wasn't as awful as that was. It's not the final judgment. And the promise to the church is this, he who is faithful and lives by faith will be saved in the end. But he who rejects Christ, ashamed or fearful or just belligerent, will be judged at the return of Christ. And just as that AD 70 judgment came and was real and was awful, the refining fire that will come back to the faithful and make us uh, uh, from, from justified, we, we are free from the penalty of sin, 
then sanctification from the, uh, I guess the, it's the presence of sin, uh, finally in glory, the power of sin and sanctification, because little by little we're getting better, in glorification we'll be free from the presence of sin, okay? So that refining fire of judgment will come and set us free finally from the presence of sin in glory. But that same fire is a fire of judgment for those who rejected Christ. And many in the church today don't want to believe in a judgment. A loving God wouldn't judge anybody in the end. But this is real words. And the judgment fell hard on all, each of the nations leading up to Israel. And God, just as he came the first time, he will come again. But this time not as a lamb, but as a lion. To establish and to call. Verse 14, oh, verse uh, 24 and 25. The student is not above his teacher. The student is not above the teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for students to be like their teachers and servants like their masters. If the head of the house has been called Belzebul, how much more the members of his household? Now Jesus is saying as his disciples, we will be like him, not greater than him. If Jesus was called Belzebul, right? So Jesus was this, he was called master. He was master of the house. But this is a play on words because Belzebub is Satan and Baal. So they're saying the master of the house is really Satan himself. You cast out demons by demons, right? Jesus said, if they say that about me, imagine what they will do to you. Jesus speaks of the likeness of the disciples and his teacher in the gospel. The gospel of John as well. Jesus when he was being betrayed that night and he called the disciples to himself, he washed their feet. And he told them in that, in those John 13 through 17, he said, you will be like me in your trials, in your suffering. But he also said, you are to be like me in humility. And then what did he do? He washed their feet. You call me master, master of the house, so I am. There's that word again. Go and do likewise. And this is how the world will see that you belong to me. Well, success for us as disciples of Christ involves us, be, involves us becoming like Jesus, dying to self, following him, becoming like him. The persecution of Jesus had already begun. And he told them, Persecution of the church will continue. I'm going to close by just reading these final verses of this uh, chapter 10, 26 through 31. It says this, So do not be afraid of them, for there is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. One day everything will be revealed. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. And that's where we're at now. Proclaim uh, the kingdom. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Whoever acknowledges me before others, I also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my Father in heaven. 
kind of heavy words as I send you out, church, right? The good news is that we are not greater than our master, but we are like him. We will suffer, but I send you out, right, as wise like serpents, but also harmless and innocent like a dove. What I'm going to do next is just open up your bulletins, if you will, and in there, there's your five lines for you to write down the names of five people that just have refused Christ up to now. Maybe they're close. Maybe they're not your enemy, but they just have not turned their life over to Christ. This is one of those opportunities to write down the names of five people there. And I'm going to call you up here to make a circle. And we're going to make a circle right around this free area here. We'll stay in front. We'll front here and around this table. But write down five names, specific names of people that need to know the Lord Jesus. And we're going to pray for them. We're going to pray that the Lord would open up the eyes of their hearts, give them spiritual understanding of who he is. And two, pray that the Lord would raise up harvest, uh, harvesters for the harvest in these, these dark and ty- trying times. And then after we pray here, what I'm going to ask you to do is at a certain time, I'll ask you to just in a symbolic way come and pick up Come to the altar and pick up your five invitations that have those five names on them. And then in faith this week, you're going to go seek those people out. It's always great if you can give someone personally, but we also have that in the app, in the Union Church app. You can send that to them, less personal. Please, please, please do not send it out to some big group. (laughs) Say, hey, there's going to be a cool church gathering. Not what this is about. This is a training time to go out to where you live, where you work, and to, in faith, encourage, by name, invite someone to come and sit with you at a blues concert and get to know those around you. So take time, and when you've written those down, come on up here. Let's make a circle. Right up here. I'm going everybody to come up. Even if you don't have your names, I want you to come up and join the circle. We're going to pray together. Even if you can't come to the event, you're still supposed to be praying for the, 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 the lost, right? <laughs> so I'm not going to go. Well, it doesn't matter if you're coming or not. We, we, the idea is that we pray for the lost, okay? And if the band wants to play some background music, that's awesome. Reese is a Christian school. What a wonderful party they had here yesterday. A lot of joy, but certainly there are some there that don't know Jesus, right, boys? Come on up and let's pray for those guys. They're going to mention them by name out loud necessarily or on the microphone, but we'll have you pray for them. Come on up, join our circle. Let's come on up, everybody. Ronald, come on up. Pray with us. Shabazz, come on up. Yeah, come on over here, guys. We're going to make a circle. Yeah, extend it over this way. If you're joining us by uh, media, ask you to do the same thing where you are. It's the holy moment before you and the Lord interceding. For the lost, how much time do you take to pray daily and weekly for the Lord? Let's pray two things. I just encourage you to pray. Even you can pray out loud. I'm going to turn my microwave, my mic, microphone off. I'm going to pray out loud for my five, and you guys know my five, my guys from the beach. I've been praying for Gabrielle and Lucas for Paulo, Orlando, and Carlone. This week at the beach, I tell you what, there's been two, two years almost now and some real hard times and um, some real moments of discernment where every time I began to talk, it was like I was ignored or people would just walk away, you know, and that was after, after I kind of shared Christ with them a little bit. 
But as I told you a couple weeks ago, Orlando had invited me to, uh, to his son's house. He said, I'm going to have a get together with just my closest friends. Would you come? And there I was able to share uh, Christ with three different people in three different ways. And then just this week, I was at the beach and I was supposed to be working out. I was sitting on a bench and two guys came up, Paulo and uh, Orlando, and they said, hey man, where's your head? You're not with us today. Where are you? And I just said, do you guys have a Bible? Because they're not believers, but they're religious. But they go, oh, we can find one online. So they did. And I said, look up Tiago 3, James 3. So the young guy got it. I got it. Okay, read verse 13. And he said, who among you think you're wise? And they laughed. <laughs> and they began to read those verses. And it talks about worldly wisdom versus godly wisdom. And as they read that, it ends with, and if you have godly wisdom, you will reap a righteous harvest. And I looked at him and I just said, I'm a pastor at a church and I don't know if we're operating out of worldly wisdom or wisdom that comes from heaven. And Paul just walked up to me and he just put his hand on my shoulder and as we were leaving. Nobody had said a thing, you know, but they just, they just empathized with me. Leading. Am I as a church leading us in worldly, worldly wisdom or wisdom that comes from heaven? And that was like a holy moment with those guys. They, for the first time, they read scripture and they identified with something there. So let's do that. Let's pray for your five even now. And I would just encourage you to pray with a voice out loud. It just does something when you say their names. Pray for five people out loud and pray the Lord would open up the eyes of their heart. It's a spiritual thing. And then also pray the Lord would send more workers to work with you in bringing them the gospel. Can we do those two things? Let's pray. Father, with those of us who are here, we know that there are many, many that surround us in our own homes, our neighbors, our family, in our work, our colleagues, in our schools, our universities, our teachers, our classmates, at the beach, at the courts, wherever we, we do our hobbies, Lord. Many, many, many. That They're good people, but they don't know you. They're not godly people. They don't know the wrath to come. They don't know the goodness that has come, the goodness of the kingdom. They don't know the goodness of the King, Lord Jesus. Would you open the eyes of their heart, all those names that we have listed? And, and Father, would you give us favor as we talk to them, invite? Would you raise up, Lord, uh, workers for the harvest, those who both are wise, but also who are innocent, O oh Lord Jesus, just presenting a godly wisdom, consideration, peacemaking, O oh Lord Jesus. Speaking truth in love. Would you use us here at the Union Church to do that and, and those who, who are visiting us in our realms of life that we might know that you truly are alive in us. 
For the kingdom that we pronounce is a kingdom that even at that time the disciples had not seen, the death and the resurrection of Christ and the pouring out of the Holy Spirit. A salvation through repentance and belief. Father, would you do that in our lives for your glory and our good? I pray in Jesus' name, amen. I ask you to just... You know, one at a time, come up and symbolically pick up your five uh, tickets. And even if you can't go, you want to do that symbolically, you can do that. Pick up five tickets. Those are people that you're praying for that you want to be a witness to of, of Christ's goodness, his mercy, and what he's done for us on the cross. I invite you to the table to pick up your tickets. And then you can take those tickets to your seats. Yeah. We're going to continue with our tithes and offerings. 2 Corinthians 9, 10 and 11 says this. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. I invite you to stand as we sing. We'll take our tithes and offerings. If you're a visitor here today, we don't oblige you to give money to the Union Church. It's not what this is about. But if you know the first fruits of, of, of being walking in the kingdom, being a, a, a kid of the king, uh, giving back, from what we already received from the Lord is not only uh, joy, but it's also, uh, before we go out and do something out there, it's just a step of sacrifice, living sacrifice to our Lord. Let's continue in our tithes and offerings. Regret over my head is can Let's change our ashes now The ones were rusted on I was a runaway Now I am finally home My mind was a ghost town Haunted by yesterday To your hand reach down Pull me on a grave To the freedom found Only in Jesus' name I am forgiven No longer lost Now I am living In the power of the cross The Father gave His Son So I could be set free are gone, my eyes can finally see, I'll turn the world apart, Jesus is not for me, I am forgiven, no longer lost, now I am leaving, in the power of the cross, to song.
praise you, oh God, I praise you, Jesus, I praise you, praise you for the Lord, we praise you. We thank you. We thank you for the cross and all that it means to us. We thank you that the cross is empty. We thank you for the resurrection of the dead. And we thank you for pouring out the Holy Spirit that works through your spiritual body this day, that you sit at the right hand of the Father and you reign, O oh Lord. We thank you for the kingdom come. And we thank you for the kingdom not yet, that one day you will come in glory. Would you now use and multiply these gifts, O oh Lord, that we might announce that message more and more. We pray that you would bless our time Saturday as we sing blues music, but we rejoice because the, the, the blues in the end, they don't uh, control us. But we know there's a happy resolution to every sad song. Lord, we thank you for the, the camaraderie we will have. And uh, we just go out with great expectation, realistic expectation of what we might confront. But we go out like our master. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. James 3, 17 and 18 received the benediction. It says this, the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, innocent. Then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy, and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace recap a harvest of righteousness. Union Church, go as shrewd serpents, wise Go as harmless doves. Go in peace. Have a great Sunday. And on the cross, this love held true, this sacrifice.